welcome back to my youtube channel well yet we principal i'm your host shaheen in today's video uh, we are going to update our analysis on gold and silver uh, because prices are not moving as we thought in our previous analysis so we have to uh, look at uh, uh, the labeling again before uh, a real uh, trend happens upward or sideward uh, downward or sideways we're going to look at uh, gold and silver we'll look at uh, what other uh, alternate la labeling is possible um, and we are expected that my major trend is we'll also going to look at um, Nasdaq Nasdaq 100 and we will also try to look at crude oil crude oil has uh, been going higher does that mean that our uh, larger time frame analysis is wrong we're gonna look at it right now so silver and gold and uh, then we look at crude oil and in the end uh, we will look at Nasdaq so let's start First of all, um, let's have a look on a 15 uh, one hourly time frame. We were expecting that we are going to see some uh, upward price movement. The price movement has not happened in that regard. So that means that I'm right now considering this whole price movement as an impulsive, which we're considering impulsive and a corrective. If you're still considering corrective, but I'm expecting that our uh, pattern that actually ended right over here that the pattern that actually started right from over here and right over here that would mean that we are looking for uh, an impulsive and a corrective move right over here let me see that on a this move I'm talking about so we have impulsive and then we have a corrective move uh, giving us an indication that the previous trend is complete on that particular level at least and then we are heading downward so which brings us to alternate labeling it means that if the prices are not behaving in that way it means there is something wrong with our analysis and the next alternate lab labeling is that we already presented once again is that we are to complete the 5F structure downward uh, and right now you can see the reason what I'm saying so so we are considering this as a leading diagonal a correction as wave B and a 5F structure as down the C so 5, 3, 5 uh, this particular price movement that actually started right from over here I'm considering that it ended right over here too it looks pretty ugly for a uh, impulsive wave especially the this part of the correction but it does happen from time to time that we have a smaller uh, wave 2 and a much extended uh, wave 4 uh, so it does happen from time to time it's not very uh, attractive but especially if you consider the labeling from the top it does make sense that we can consider the previous price move as an impulsive uh, and then we can create can consider the whole price movement as corrective starting from over here uh, so I'm right now considering this whole price movement as an ABC we have to complete a which is already a leading diagonal correctional and a 5 wave structure downward we have completed one two three four and five in that regard we are looking that we are very close to the completion of the correction that actually started from over here but more uh, recently we have seen a sharper price movement downward uh, I'm not able to con I'm not going to consider that we are to uh, start a new wave of 1 and 2 and 1 and 2 I am not going to consider that well we keep an eye on the markets definitely so this is the labeling of the the market right now I'm just considering uh, silver to be bearish in the next few days this is uh, uh, completely different from what we were uh, agreeing uh, last week and uh, and we were saying that we were expected to see prices going upward however the uh, the some other time frame analysis is completely different we can clearly see a, an impulsive move and a corrective move so we can go down I'm pretty sure you guys can hear probably some song it's coming off there's some kids playing outside it's summer everybody is enjoying so please don't mind that let's have a look at gold so what has to happen gold uh, in the same regard I'm considering that if the prices were supposed to you're expecting a pattern in which give me a moment we're expecting a pattern in which we have completed an impulsive first wave of correction and then we were saying second wave of correction and downward however we can, we can see that the prices have not moved that regard nothing fits in uh, we can definitely see a five wave structure a correction we can definitely see sharper price moving upward uh, that's it afterwards we have a, a sharper move downward and we can see a sort of kind of correctional pattern we have right over here either W or an impulsive wave this one is a clearly uh, correctional structure and we have another wave going upward so you can consider that the double zigzag or a single zigzag that actually started right from over here 
and we right now considering there is an impulsive bearish move uh, against a corrective move so giving us an indication the major trends is downward if you want to be really more careful about the the price target uh, about the confirmation of this trend then we can see that the run prices break from right over here 1829 that will give us a confirmation of a bearish outlook for gold I'm right now more concerned right now that we are gonna be because our main cons main price movement didn't happen so alternate labeling coming in handy and we are turning back downward so on our four hourly time frame we can see that you are anticipating a wave one and two and three four and a five wave downward this uh, this channel pretty parallel channel is pretty useful uh, in previous price section we can see that we have extended we started it from the pri beginning the price section extended it to the end of wave one and we also found support at two three points right over here this one clearly predicted the end of wave three so we're going to use the same channel uh, for the end of wave five uh, at the price uh, price target area so we can see that it's going to be ending somewhere right over here So in this regard, we can say that about 70, 20, 17, 20 is going to be our our target. Now this area is also important. It brings to us the on the trend line that actually started right from over here. So this channel is giving us indication that we probably are going to finding some support on this one. If we are able to cross that support, we have going to be creating a double bottom with this one. This is what the analysis is. So, so we are on a larger time frame. We are completing an A. A B and a C, basically a three, three and five wave structure downward. As soon as that is complete, we have wave three complete and wave four complete, and we will be heading upward. There's one more possibility, uh, and that we will not discuss that right now. I'm anticipating that this is much enough time for the completion of the correction, and we should actually shoot upward from there. So this is uh, once again an update on uh, on gold and silver. Let's have a look at crude oil now crude oil has been running high and higher we were anticipating that this is going to be a try ending diagonal however the shape did not uh, the exact labeling did not happen I'm still anticipating it to be an ending diagonal I'm considering this as an impulsive wave and a corrective wave the first wave is a three wave structure a three wave structure and a five wave structure so the small labeling which were considering a little differently from before uh, I've changed that a bit means the larger trend is still uh, we're considering that the larger trend is going to be downward still so I'm right now considering it at the wave 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 a confirmation of the bearish outlook once again would come right over here in this end which is the break of 110 which is far away from right over here understandably so in that regard we can definitely use the break of this trend line when prices cross this trend line the diagonal the support trend line for the whole ending diagonal we can also use that as a trigger function uh, to be bearish I'm still bearish I I know we have gone much deeper as far as the price target is concerned uh, but I'm still bearish on on uh, on crude oil I'm expecting that we are to move downward we can see that we have completed seven out of eight moves so this is almost 87 point uh, five percent wave is c almost complete pretty deep price movement uh, and a, l a lot of time has spent give me a moment all right and we have spent a lot of time in correction we can say that on a daily time frame here you can see we have spent a lot of time on correction so I am thinking uh, that pretty soon uh, a price movement is expected to come give me a moment and I can give you guys a pretty quick uh, analysis of what are to be anticipate one moment please and uh, I'm looking for one of the clues that I can use in uh, all right so I'm thinking that this reversal as soon as it happens is going to be a sharper move downward a very very sharp move m in downward and then will which will be followed uh, by some sort of correction we will have another move downward another correction and downward so we're definitely heading downward in uh, in, in crude oil but the initial price movement is going to be swift and strong and it's going to give a lot of people uh, 
a lot of people are gonna s get surprised from that particular price woman so you can use whatever tools that you want uh, for example use limit orders instead of market orders um, there is a possibility that if you are going to anticipate waiting for it you may miss the major move down happen it can happen in the nighttime daytime whatever my analysis still same is still same we have to change a little labeling a bit prices went definitely a little more deeper than we were thinking but the larger time frame analysis is still same i'm expecting kudal to be uh, bearish and next few days are going to be very very interesting and uh, let's have a look this is this is the large time frame our somewhere around this inch is going to be our uh, our target for next three to four weeks I would say for crude oil we have also to look at um, Nasdaq and Nasdaq is showing pretty interesting behavior I have already uh, shown it to you guys now first of all let me delete that and then you'll read it don't worry about it so the labeling is in front of you I've told you guys that we were to uh, very close to the completion of the initial five wave structure that actually started right from over here I'm considering that we have this blue labeling use that in mind I'm considering that we have this blue labeling which is wave one completed right over here we have clearly wave one two three four and five wave structure then we have uh, a flat correction and I'm expecting that we have completed wave war uh, right over here and then we have to go downward uh, right over here so I'm completely considering that wave one is the largest wave out of the five wave structure and then we have wave two and then wave three is already complete we have kind of completed or very very close to the completion of wave four once again it is uh, keeping beyond uh, the entrance level of the end of wave one so it's not entering in that area right over here too so and let me confirm that once again I, I checked earlier and we can see that it's not it did not enter into the territory of wave one and then we have to look that for the major price movement is going to be downward once again we are using the trend channel that is uh, to create we have started it from the end of wave two and uh, we have brought it to the end of wave four and then we have extended it to the top of wave three and we can see that we are to anticipate the price movement downward right over here too so somewhere around this range is to expect let me have a look on a weekly time frame what important support levels are here uh, we can see that uh, the previous return that happened is from in the in the middle of the structure the next target is going to be right over here uh, let me bring it uh, we can also use the other target as well uh, this one right over here so one target is for this top this bottom and uh, one target is for this bottom so give me a moment and we can extend that to daily time frame okay so this is also kind of brings it to the lower end of the channel right over here in this range right over here and this one as well so somewhere in this end is going to be our target area for a nasdaq 100 and after that is complete uh, we will be completing a, uh, a five wave structure of a higher uh, mm, higher degree and then we are to go in a correctional pattern all right there is a possibility that we are going to go deeper uh, we can definitely complete something like a flat correction as well uh, but we will definitely see some sort of breathing coming in the market uh, and the markets will be able to uh, breathe and then after that is complete that correction is complete we are to go uh, major uh, move downward so right now in short we are looking for next few days to be bearish uh, before we can head on to the completion uh, let's have a look on a I'll try to have a look on a uh, on what's this called a FTSE 102 all right uh, gentlemen uh, ladies and gentlemen I definitely said that I will actually uh, analyze nifty for uh, audience from India I did not have enough time once again I am uh, running parallel things in my life so I'm really sorry as soon as I get some time I try to uh, bring it to you guys I had already done a lot of research on FTSE that's why I was able to uh, bring the analysis to you on my one of my previous um, previous instructions so here we can see that the structure right now looking at is an a a b and a c structure right here we can clearly see wave one and two and three and four and five we have not only completed that we have come downward we are completing a correction pattern down as well uh, so we can clearly label that quickly 
uh, let me give you a moment so we can clearly see as an A, a B and a C and then we clearly see uh, we have 1 and 2 and 3 and Four and five. So let's bring out array four definitely right over here. Right over here. And well, a smaller time frame, we can see that we have seen a sharper move downward, and that we are C, A, B, and C. I'm expecting that either that or we completed the price movement over here, and this is the correction both are valid things I'm not going to discuss and argue over it I do believe that we have completed a correctional pattern and we have uh, come downward and right now we can see uh, that the correction of the impulse move downward kind of stayed in this region right over here it did not uh, it found support right over here too so it's the first level the market has to complete is this area the first confirmation that we're going to get is the market has to clear beyond uh, clear this point and then go further that a clearing of this area would give us a, a confirmation of what we are looking at it or and confidence in our um, we can definitely use this trend line as well and confidence in our count are what it's gonna say and confidence in our count so we can let me have a look we can probably use wave uh, one and two and see if the, we can get some market guidance now this is too far from over here so we're not gonna use that and uh, give me a moment so let's see if you can use that once we again we can see that it's not actually getting any kind of uh, actually it is yeah this trend line is getting some sort of reaction we have two points above that and we have two points above that right over here too and prices came down and retested it this trend line and going downward uh, we would definitely we can also use uh, this particular trend line that actually starts right from over here and goes all the way right over here this is also pretty good trend line we can see that we have uh, a point on top of it and this point we combined to draw the trend line and then we broke below it and then we kind of retested that trend line too as well so we can use either of them for a uh, uh, and I think next coming next session to the tomorrow session is going to be pretty bearish for the Nasdaq for Dow Jones uh, for Tesla and uh, For FTSE as well. We'll try to look at FTSE as well uh, Dow Jones uh, And this is uh, Dow Jones 30. Let's have a quick look in the Dow Jones 30 It's kind of showing the same thing only thing is that we are seeing some sort of strong truncation right over here, too All right, we are seeing strong truncation and we are to expect prices going downward there's a lot of kind of a b and c structure we have a pretty small price movement right over here too so please uh, be really careful we definitely need a confirmation in this regard there's a lot of mess happening in this region so we definitely need a clearance of this area before we can actually be confirmed uh, that we are heading downward and we can have more confidence in our uh, labeling in dow jones as well uh, Tesla let's have a quick look on Tesla and uh, we can see that once again we have an imp a corrective movement right over here too in Tesla we have actually uh, a better outlook we have dropped quite a bit we have dropped beyond the this area as well right now we can see and that we are seeing a smaller impulsive followed by a corrective wave to go down or further downward so Tesla is also bearish and let me see if we can actually uh, get some price target for Tesla right here we can have the price target on this line and which is going to bring our price target in this range right over here too which is going to be about 425 400 ish in this region and we can also look at the structure that we have and which is right over here so it looks that we are going to be somewhere in the middle of this structure right over here too we can definitely use uh, and this one right over here give me two let me turn that find the bare middle of that and it is right over here this is the middle of this this particular structure 
you can delete that and you can right now see that this structure is going to be somewhere around this region and the lower end is definitely on the trend line as well so we can either use this one or that one end to be target but pretty now we can see that the target was uh, on this trend line so we can definitely use this trend line as a as a target funding tool for Tesla and FTSE as I said that we're going to discuss FTSE all right now I have been looking at FTSE um, and uh, I know that we have seen a deeper price movement in FTSE and um, not only that we have seen uh, we are going to discuss the FTSE I have done some cycle analysis I have found a major major uh, cycle that is going to happen in FTSE uh, before I can discuss the, that cycle we need to definitely see uh, price movement downward so I will be discussing it is into the future it's in the future well in the future and we'll be able to uh, guide the people who are going to invest long term so it's a long term cycle that we're looking into uh, I will be definitely discussing uh, for FTSE especially and uh, where exactly the price they're heading and when exactly the turn or the bullish turn is expected to happen in FTSE it's a long term analysis we're definitely going to discuss that in future right now at, the, at this point uh, let's say that uh, let's first of all starting from this point uh, we can definitely look at the price section and we can all right okay so I've already indicated to you guys I'm still bearish on uh, on, on FTSE nothing has changed in that regard uh, I'm still bearish on FTSE I'm trying to look for a, a pattern that actually started from over here or over here and extended way into the depth right over here so what we're looking at it give me let's give me let's uh, the quick analysis what we're looking at it there's a possibility of an impulsive move a corrective move and another impulsive move uh, right now we can see that we have seen prices coming downward went up uh, came down as well so could we be looking at a uh, wave 4 and then a minute uh, and then another wave upward would be giving a wave 5 so we can definitely look at an impulsive move a corrective move wave 1 and 2 and wave 3 and wave 4 and 5 or there is a possibility that we have completed wave 4 right over here and wave 5 would be give this one so we once again we are very very close to because we're looking at all other indices and US indices are strongly bearish uh, so I'm thinking that we are very very close uh, to the, the completion of the the correction that actually started all the way right over here too so you can consider this as a WX envoy all right this is going to be wave one and this is going to be wave two pretty pretty deep wave 2 we are expecting uh, let's have a cool look at it. <laughs> all right it's, so it's already in front of you I'm not gonna hide uh, we are going to discuss this uh, that we are going to be expecting bottom somewhere in uh, in the December 2023 so a major I'm expecting a major price movement downward adding and we are to anticipate the bottom should come or somewhere around December 23 a major downfall I'm expecting uh, let me give me see if there is no more to th and I'll discuss also if if you guys are interested I'm going to do a WD GAN analysis on on FTSE all right and I'll see you, uh, how I personally use angles it's not necessarily the same way but I think that's how GAN used it we'll so quickly discuss that as well so I'm expecting that we are to see some major price movement swing downward uh, for two years in in FTSE at least all right let's have a look on f so what did I do uh, let me show you uh, first we have the targets range right over here and once again that has to be corrected this is showing uh, December 2023 uh, I have used one of the GAN rules is called the uh, the anniversary date rule so I'm anticipating that we are to see exactly that in two years that's what the target is starting from that top right over here two year target and we can definitely turn that target to uh, an eight equal divisions that's how uh, GAN performed his operations 
so we can see that we are yeah right here much better so we have eight divisions and this we have also eight divisions in in price from previous target levels let me show you right over here too so I figured out that 3286 was an important point so I drew the eight division of the previous price structure previous impulsive movement so right now you can see that using some uh, methodology I have found that uh, bottom is to be expected in the end of two years net term and then I will also use the previous price movement as uh, a tool uh, to find an important support and resistance point for the, this particular swing downward so this is what exactly a square of 8 by 8 this nothing nothing fancy right over here this is what exactly I have done and in doing so right now we can see that this is 1 by 8 right over here uh, we can divide it further into 2 to give us 1 by 16 right over here and we can see that uh, this came pretty close to the 1 by 16 uh, we can definitely look by right over here that will give us 1 by 24 readings and once again once you do that you can see that this bounce came pretty close to uh, uh, 2 by uh, 3 of I know 2 by 24 right so this is pretty close to 1 uh, or 1 by 12 of the total time ex that we are expecting and I believe this is how he reached his, his conclusions once he found uh, different support points in time and then he just kind of tried to uh, take a clue from over here so right now we can see that we have not even completed the first eight of it there's also possibility that uh, this price structure is still going and that will be completing in uh, one by eight so we have to keep a close eye on the, this particular structure that's going on still I'm bearish on FTSE my indications are mathematical calculations are showing a two-year bearish uh, term in FTSE uh, so let's have a look and I'm using GAN angles right from over here once again these angles are calculations from uh, a square of eight by eight so this is we have uh, one two three and four squares of price and we have eight squares of uh, time and I have drawn this angle right from over top and I have drawn this angle from by combining the top and this one right over here so let me let me see if he can actually some find something in the middle right over here so we can see the prices have come down from over there uh, right over here okay so it's we, we can is kind of seeing that the prices uh, jumped up right over here in this regard we are finding some resistance we are also finding some support let's zoom in to see what it is okay so here it is right now we can see that uh, if price can actually cross this angle pretty useful I mean, because price went up and found a support and jumped up again and they're finding resistance on the upper angle we have already one two three and four points so I guess we can actually use the lower trend line this one which is a WD GAN angle for a confirmation of the of the change in the direction of the trend uh, so I think when prices cross somewhere in this range we can definitely say that uh, the trend is heading downward uh, we can also see that this particular area uh, we have found some resistance resistance already going up uh, once again we have found support right over here one by eight of a previous uh, or previous movement so all of the different clues are left in 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 the price action uh, something if you guys like definitely throw a comment I'll try to give more detailed explanation on uh, FTSE uh, I'm not going to tell you guys how I found the the time cycle so this is, uh, is something proprietary uh, but I'm definitely looking for two years in terms of uh, bearish price movement in FTSE Wish you good luck with your trading. If you like the content, please do press thumbs up. The video was way more lengthier than I initially thought, but I just kept going. And if you don't like it, definitely just see the first section. Definitely. It's not a rocket science. Wish you good luck with your uh, trading. Have a good one and bye-bye.